I've been making videos on this channel for over two years now. However, I've been interested in filmmaking for a lot longer than that. In fact, I made my first film when I was 10 years old. It was called The Search of Space. I made the film using Lego, Play-Doh, and just about anything else I could think of. The finished product isn't very good, but it did help ignite a passion in me which still endures today. After two years talking about other people's films, I decided to indulge in a little shameless self-promotion. When possible, I'll include links in the description. Growing up, I would often convince my friends to make movies with me whenever they came over to visit. Of course, by the time we'd come up with a story, gotten set up, and actually started filming, my friends would inevitably have to go home. I did complete one short film, a high school media project with two friends in 2009. Also in 2009, I made half a dozen short films with some friends from my church. Again, these films weren't very good, but we had a lot of fun making them. Oh God, you gotta help me! It's okay, I'm here. Oh God! The name's Jesus. Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. These productions grew more elaborate and ambitious, culminating in the 10 minute scripted short film, In the Picture. This film introduced the character of Jess Miller, who would become central to my next two projects. At the beginning of 2010, I wrote a 30 minute film called Jess Miller's Big Move. In the film, the Miller family moves cities when Jess's dad is given a promotion at work. I naively thought we could produce the film in just four months. If you pay close attention, there are still two subtle references to Easter in the finished film. At the time, it was the most ambitious project I had worked on. In fact, it's still the longest film I've ever made. When I watch it now, it's easy to see my own inexperience. It's clear I still had a lot to learn about directing, and filmmaking in general. The pacing and editing aren't bad, but the coverage is pretty poor, and the writing is pretentious. I had a life back home! I had friends! I had family! Although, contextually, that actually kind of works. I wore a lot of hats just to get the film made, and had very little supervision or oversight. However, my most prominent memory of making this film was my determination to finish it. Though I had expected to get it done in four months, it ended up taking 12. I have since grown accustomed to projects taking longer than expected. But it was this experience that taught me perseverance. The following year, I made a Christmas-themed follow-up, this time focused on Jess's youngest sister, Lisa, called Lisa Miller's Christmas. In case it wasn't clear from the Christmas videos on this channel, I love Christmas-themed entries in ongoing series. The film was quite different to Jess Miller's big move. I tend to think of it more as a spin-off than a direct sequel. The story was loosely based on Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, with a mysterious figure, credited as Christmas Man, a cross between Jesus and Santa, guiding Lisa on a journey through space and time in order to impart a lesson. Oh, hello. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. Who are you? Well, that's the thing, isn't it? From a production standpoint, this is a superior film. My grasp of filmmaking had progressed in leaps and bounds. Just compare the coverage of these two conversations between Jess and her dad. This film involved many of the same cast and crew as its predecessor. Though it only ended up being half as long, we were able to produce it in less than a quarter of the time. We all knew what we were doing this time, which made the whole experience more enjoyable. In 2014, some friends of mine made a short film called Markless. The film depicts a world in which a person's social status is dictated by a distinctive birthmark on their wrist. The more intricate a person's mark, the higher their position in society. Those born without a mark, dubbed markless, are at the bottom of the ladder. However, these individuals are able to take another person's mark by killing them. After seeing the film, I was inspired by the world my friends had created, and asked them if I could make a prequel. After discussing the world and characters with them, I wrote a script which fleshed out the backstory of the Crown Princess, Avery. I enjoyed the challenges involved in trying to respectfully follow up someone else's work. 
I reused several characters and locations in order to create a sense of continuity between the two films. I made this film while studying media at university, with access to university equipment. As a result, it looks a lot better than my previous work. This was also the first time I worked with cinematographer and editor Luke Patterson, who helped give the finished film a cinematic quality. The cast also included Shaney Lee Smith. The following year, Shaney and I co-wrote a comedy short film called Indecisive. The film follows a social recluse with an overactive imagination, who is forced to visit his local video store. Shaney and I played the two leads. Wait! Maybe you can help me. Though I'd made brief appearances in previous films, this was the first time I took a starring role in one of my own productions. We shot the film on location in the Blockbuster video store where I was working at the time. We managed to get everything we needed in just one day. The simple premise and smooth production made this one of my most enjoyable filmmaking experiences. The film itself is also one of my personal favourites. Shaney and I collaborated again on another comedy short film called Opportune Moment. The film's premise is somewhat similar to Indecisive, a guy pining after a girl who has no interest in him, but with the added gimmick that the viewer can hear both characters' inner thoughts. Here we are. Great. Now I have to drive extra long to get home. Thanks for giving me a lift home. I didn't mean to make you go all out of your way. Crap. I'm being weird. Though the film only featured one location, a car, this presented its own set of challenges. Do you want me to try and slouch a bit? Uh... Fake it. Yeah. That's... That's way better, yeah. yeah. Do that, yeah. E. It's going to make this even, like, hard. <laughs> <laughs> Cars are hard. Like that, Despite being a slightly more complicated production, we still had a lot of fun. Easily my most ambitious project to date was Aradin's story, A StarQuest Prelude. Since 2010, I've been developing an idea for a trilogy of science fiction fantasy feature films under the umbrella title StarQuest. Rather than tackle an entire feature film, I decided to shoot a couple of scenes which could be released as a short film in order to generate interest and support for the larger project. This idea eventually became Aridan's story, hence the subtitle, A StarQuest Prelude. We split production into two blocks. The first covered the central conversation between young Aridan and his grandfather Agra, while the second covered the various cutaways. Filming on block one began in September 2015, there were over a dozen cast and crew members on set. As production dragged on into block two, that number dropped. This was my first film to feature an original score, composed by Brian Hooley. You can listen to the entire soundtrack over on the Lucas Studios YouTube channel. Though it took years to complete, this project gave me the opportunity to work with a variety of talented people. It also became my first multinational production, as the opening aerial shots were filmed in New Zealand. If you want to learn more about how this film got made, you can watch my appropriately titled video, How Aridan's Story, A StarQuest Prelude, Got Made. Two years ago, I revealed I was working on a sequel to Indecisive. Speaking of sequels, I'm actually currently working on one of my own. We're well into production now, and I'm excited to share more with you all in the coming months. As I mentioned previously, I've grown accustomed to projects taking longer than expected. However, in this instance, I believe it will be worth the wait. A lot of people have put a lot of effort into this film, and I'm looking forward to sharing it with an audience. <laughs> Things are still a little uncertain, but I'm hoping the film will be released next month. Beyond that, I have a number of other projects that I'm working on, at various stages of development. If you have seen any of my films, or if watching this video inspires you to check any of them out, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, why not give it a thumbs up? Maybe share it with a friend? Or an enemy? Either way, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to see more content here on Channel 73.